Hello folks and welcome to Sun Codex. In today's video we're going to be looking at the sampling theorem, aliasing and band limited waveforms. So let's start with the first one. The sampling theorem, also called Nyquist-Shannon theorem, states that to perfectly recreate a signal, sampling rate should be at least twice the highest frequency component of the signal we want to recreate or analyze. In the field of audio, digital audio, we can keep as reference the audible spectrum. We know that human ear can perceive sounds, frequencies in the range 20 to 20,000 hertz. And that's why one of the most common sampling rate used in digital audio is 44.1 kilohertz. Now, this number is not the exact double of this upper limit, but the reason won't be covered in this video. Now, the question arises, what if the signal we want to recreate exceeds half of the sampling rate or the sampling rate isn't high enough? So, let's make an experiment and I want to make a sine sweep and I can use line tilde to change the frequency of this sine wave oscillator. Inside the message, I can say go to 48,000 in 10 seconds. And then we can add a second message to reset the line in case we want to re-trigger the same sine sweep. So thanks to this very simple patch, the oscillator frequency will go from 0 Hz to 48,000 Hz. Now we can take the oscillator output and send it to the output tilde abstraction. Before moving on, let's grab the frequency output and convert the signal to a float number. Let's add an, a ramp time of 50 milliseconds. And I don't want decimal numbers, so I can use I to turn the float output into an integer and then this float box to visualize the frequency. Just a quick note before running the patch. This black window is a spectrogram meter, a tool used to display frequencies as colored pixels. The brighter the color, the greater the amplitude. Time is shown in the x-axis, frequencies on the y-axis ranging from zero up to 24,000 Hz, that is half of my sampling rate. What I'm expecting is a straight line starting at 0 Hz, raising up to 24,000 and then keep going, so from 24,000 up to 48,000. Since our signal is out of scope, at a certain point it will disappear, won't it? What happened in reality was that the signal, the frequency line, has folded in on itself. This phenomenon is called aliasing and it's a type of distortion that occurs when either the sampling rate is too low or our signal is exceeding half of the sampling rate. This causes the higher frequency components to be misinterpreted as lower frequencies leading to a distorted representation of the original audio signal. In this example, we can see how the frequency of 48,000 Hz is interpreted as 0 Hz. But how to minimize or get rid of aliasing? There are three techniques we can use. The first one is filtering. So we can use low pass filters to get rid or minimize that frequency fold over. In the PD language, we have low, which is a first order low pass filter, one pole, so it has a very gentle roll off frequency, 6 dB per octave. It is very efficient and consumes very little CPU. Now we can create a sine tone at 100 Hz 
and we can clip the amplitude of this sine wave in the range minus 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Clipping is one of those processing techniques that adds a lot of aliasing. Now we can send the signal to the output module and we can use two scopes to visualize the waveform before and after. We can decrease the frequency just to better visualize what's going on. So this is the original sine wave, very smooth, range minus one to one, and here our clipped sine wave. Clipping, as I said, adds a lot of aliasing because of the sharp transition when the signal changes states from clipped to non-clipped. And as we can see from the spectrogram, this is a very, very noisy sine wave. Now we can insert low and we can set its frequency of frequency to 1000 Hertz. As we can see, aliasing is minimized, but it's not enough. We can add a new one, a second one, then a third one. In case you want to use a different low pass filter, there's also low pass. This, though, is a resonant low pass filter, so even if you don't change the resonance, the Q factor, it's a second order low pass filter with character, so it will color your sound. Let's take a listen. Second technique is called oversampling, and it involves sampling the audio signal at a significantly higher sampling rate than the Nyquist rate. The main downside of this technique is that it is more CPU consuming since we are processing sound at a very high sampling rate. This technique won't be covered in this video because I consider it an advanced topic. In case you're super curious and you want to dive deeper into the world of oversampling, you can enter the documentation browser, documentation, all the examples, you can scroll down and here we have the example J07 over sampling. You can double click and you can read through this documentation file and take a listen to the audio examples. Last but not least, we can talk about band limited signals. This is to me the best approach. Let's say you want to build a synthesizer, well, make sure to use band limited signals. Here we can see the difference between a standard sawtooth wave. This is not limited, and we can immediately see how the entire spectrum is full of harmonics and unwanted frequencies. If we compare this sawtooth wave with the band limited one, well, the situation has improved, but it is not as good as I would expect. BL. So is a good choice, but we can do better. Every time I develop my own synth or I work with plug data, I always keep in mind the sound of this guy here. So the waveforms produced by analog synthesizers are really, really smooth and they are extremely good sounding. In today's video, we're going to see how to recreate waveforms that are as close as possible to the one produced by these great machines. To fully explain how to make band limited waveforms, I'll need to introduce another theorem, but don't worry because the explanation will be super quick and easy. I'm talking about the Fourier theorem. The basic idea behind it is that any periodic waveform can be decomposed into a series of sine waves. Peer data offers a practical way to implement this concept by summing multiple sine waves with specified frequencies and amplitudes. The practical way I'm referring to involves a method called sine sum that we can use only within arrays. So let's create a new array and we can change its size to 512 samples. Then we can create a message that starts with a semicolon. This type of message is called internal message, so it's sent within the PD environment. Then we can write the array name. 
in my example is array1. We can declare the method sign sum. We can specify the array size 512. And from here, we can list the amplitude of each harmonics. So let's start with the sine wave. We know that it has only one harmonic, so the fundamental tone. So I want amplitude 1 for that fundamental frequency. As always, amplitude here is normalized in the range 0 to 1. We can click and voila, that's our sine wave. So far, so good. Now let's see how to make a sawtooth so wave. We know that sawtooth so waves are made both of even and odd harmonics. We can use the following formula to calculate the amplitude for each harmonic, that is 1 divided by the harmonic index. Here we can make a very simple sawtooth so wave with just four harmonics. So index 1, 2, 3, and 4. What I need to do is divide 1 by the harmonic index. So 1 divided by 1 is 1, 1 divided by 2, 0 0.5. 0 0.33 and 0 0.25. So we can take these values, copy and paste them here. Now, if I hit this message, well, this reminds of a so tooth wave. We only have one problem, that is, the sum of all these numbers exceeds one. So what we can do is we can add a semicolon and we can write the array name once again, array one, space normalize. Now you can hit the message, and now the waveform is normalized in the range minus one to one. Here we can see a sawtooth wave with 12 partials. For easy copy and paste, you can check out the harmonic amplitudes in the video description. Now, how do we play this waveform? So we can use tab OSC4, which is an interpolating oscillator. More precisely, it is a wavetable lookup oscillator that we can use to read through the array at audio rate. We can specify the array name. We can provide frequency as a signal. So the float box goes into a sig tilde. Here we change the, the frequency and we send the audio signal to the output module. How many partials can we add? If we take a look at the help file from tab OSC4, we can see that for good results use 512 points for up to about 15 partials or 32 times n partials rounded up to a power of 2 for more than 15 partials. So the thing here is use as many partials as you want as long as you don't approach half of the sampling rate. Moving on, we have the triangle waveform that contains odd harmonics only. We can use the following formula to calculate each odd harmonic index. That is 1 divided by the squared harmonic index number, all this with negative sign. So we multiply the result by minus one. So here we can write the harmonic index, one, then three, five, and so on. Now one squared is one, three squared is nine, five squared is 25. Now we need to divide one by 9 and 1 by 25. So 1 divided by 9 is 0 0.11 and 1 divided by 25 is 0 0.04. So 1 is the first harmonic, well the fundamental tone, then 0, then minus 0 0.11, 0, and minus 0 0.04. And, well, it doesn't look like a triangle waveform, so let's add a few more harmonics. With 12 partials, it now looks like a real triangle waveform. And finally, we have square waves. As we've seen for triangle waveforms, they have odd harmonics only, and 
The formula is actually super simple, so for odd harmonics, 1 divided by the harmonic index. So 1, then we place a 0, then 1 divided by 3, it's 0 0.33 here, then we place a 0, next 1 divided by 5, and so on. This waveform sounds very, very soft, so in case you want to have a more aggressive square wave, make sure to increase the number of partials, and you can also add saturation. So there's a function called hyperbolic tangent function that is the one used for saturation. So you grab your tab OSC for output, you can multiply it by a gain factor, Let's multiply this by 2. We send it to the tanh function and then to the output module. And maybe we can compare these two waveforms. So the one with saturation and the one without saturation. The one with saturation sounds louder and has more harmonics. As you can see here, we also have some aliasing, a little bit here. To get rid of it, that, well, we can use a low pass filter set to a very high frequency, like 15,000 Hertz. This was a how to make good sounding band limited waveforms. If you learned something new from those course, please let me know with a comment down below. If you want to support my channel, consider subscribing. And if you want to get access to all my plug data slash pure data projects, consider joining my Patreon page. The link is in the video description down below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.